this is Michael Kaplan from the American Guitar Academy, backstage at the Blue Note Tokyo with Larry Carlton, who was gracious enough to give us some of his time. Thank you hey, Michael. very much. Yeah, buddy. Thanks. Uh, we'll try to do this quickly as Larry's got to get on stage. <laughs> um, do you come from a musical family? You know, my mom played some guitar, acoustic guitar, and could sing harmony. And her father, who I never met, he died at about age 50. Uh, he played the fiddle, oh. and they were living in southeastern Oklahoma, so they would play on the front porch and at the church. Oh, wow. yeah. So mom had rhythm <laughs> and a sense of melody, yeah. and so there was an old acoustic guitar laying around at my grandmother's house, and that's when I first saw one. I was about four years old. When did you start playing? I started taking lessons when I was about six and a half. Really? Um, they said, my mom says I was so fascinated with the guitar that she told me, when you're big enough to hold it, then you can take lessons. All right. And it was a big, <laughs> big old full acoustic, size? you know, full size oh, wow. acoustic, no name on the yeah. headstock. So that's how it started. All right. Mm -hmm. And did you, you started when you were taking lessons, you were seven, six and a half. Six and a half. Yeah, yeah. Did you, I mean, I guess at that age you don't really know what practicing is, so did you play a lot? Did you, I mean, did, you know, what were you? Well, it was structured, you know, I, it had, was, okay. I had a teacher. All right. So, of course, it was, here's a C chord, yeah. here's the name of the strings, and that's how you start, just like everybody. And then work your way up, the yeah. front, up to, to other... When did you continually took lessons until you were... 14. High, 14, okay. Mm -hmm. Changed from the first teacher after about six or eight months, mm -hmm. and went to another teacher in Torrance, California, and stayed with him for the next seven years or so. Once a week, All right. 30 minute lesson, <laughs> and had to practice sure. as a child, sure. 30 minutes every day except for the weekend. But I played more, than, <laughs> I played more than that. Right, yeah, obviously. Uh, um, what do you, what's your feeling on music education? The reason why I ask is because there's some, there seems to be a misunderstanding sometimes where people think, uh, I need to read music in order to play guitar. And, as we know, there's plenty of phenomenal musicians that don't read music. Yeah. What do you think of the whole education thing and learning to read versus, versus sure, just, just playing and, you know, look, sure. learning by doing it? Sure. Um, well, for me, I can't imagine me being the guitar player I am had I not taken lessons and learned to read music. And in college, I was a music major. Okay. So I have a, um, a very deep understanding of harmony which makes me, in my opinion, a better soloist because I'm never guessing you know where it's going. what note yeah. would work or not. So yes, there are guitar players that don't read, that have great instincts and, and play wonderfully. Often, for a guy like me, listening to those players, I hear notes that I think are inappropriate. Okay. It goes by so quickly right. that it sounds great, yeah. but if you wrote it out, and saw what the chord progression sure, was, sure, there would sure. be notes that I think would might have better choices. Okay. It's, so that's no I it's mm -hmm. a very I, I like the I like it. I like it. Um the studio work when, when did you get involved doing I mean what was the progression? So here you are, you said you went to university and majored in music? I majored in music and I I was turning down work while oh. in college, turning down demo sessions. Uh -huh things like that. Uh, so when I was 21, um, I started getting calls for demo sessions in Hollywood. And from there, it was for a publishing company. So they would hire, you know, younger players, <coughs> excuse me, and do the demos. Well, it was a short time after that, I was the arranger of the demos, because I had so many ideas. And the other players on the demos, when they would get a master call, they would say, oh, and I played with this guy the other day. Right. And that's how it went, word of mouth yeah. from the other players. Sure, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, yeah, word of mouth is the best. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've played with so many people, obviously. Um, is there anybody you, well, obviously there is, that you haven't played with that you wish you could have? Mm -hmm. Or wish you still could, if they're still around? Sure, sure, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a whole list of people, but anybody that stands out? Yeah, I've, I've for a long time, I have, in my heart and mind, wished that I could play one song yeah. 
in a bar, in a club someplace, sure. with McCoy Tyner. Really? Not that I feel I'm worthy. <laughs> Honestly. I don't know about that. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. But I was such a fan of that whole Coltrane yeah. quartet that, that, that playing with McCoy would be as close as I could get to the whole thing. And just one tune, a blues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing. I'm not going to play Giant Steps. Yeah. I'm going to play Larry. But that, for me, that would be something I go, I played with McCoy Tyner. He played with John Coltrane. Yeah, nah, nah. So that's a dream that won't happen. Uh, no. <laughs> Is McCoy still He's, he's still, still around. Yeah, I haven't seen him playing, sure. though. I don't, I mean. He's still playing. Actually, no, he came to Japan a few years ago, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, wow. So that's what comes to mind. Yeah, no, that's it. That's a, that's a, um, since mostly guitar players are going to be watching this video, um, obviously you're known for using the 335. Mm -hmm. um, you've been using it for, I can't even, I don't even know how many years. Um, is it the same 335? Mm -hmm. The same exact one you use? Tonight I'll be playing yeah, the same that one. one. Um, I assume you're rigs, so to speak, amps have changed, obviously, over the years, amplifiers have changed, and effects, whatever you're using, what do you, what, what have you used, or what are you using now? Yeah, you know, I played the double, first yeah. in the 70s, I played the boogie live, I had one of the first ones made, yeah. um, but in the studio, mm -hmm. most of the early 70s, it was, everybody was using Princeton reverb amps, okay. small, didn't bleed into the microphones, but yeah, for live, it was boogie, then double. Should I ask how you got your jumble? Because you know, <laughs> well, <laughs> if you, I, 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 mean, I got a call from him, I Howard. believe, yeah. And uh, anyway, I was invited over to his private place to hear his amp, wow. and uh, Eric Johnson was there that night playing through one. That's when I met Eric. Yeah. So yeah, I love the amp, and I just told Mr. Dumble, I said. I've heard that you're very difficult to get a hold of and that nobody in the world can work on this amp except you. So I'll buy the amp yeah. from you if you promise you'll take care of it for me. And he did for over 20 years. Over 20 years. And you, why did you make the, why did you switch? From My amps got tired and I live in Nashville now and it's difficult, more difficult than ever to get a hold of Mr. Dumble. So, he switched I, just to, I went to Bluto Tone and he cloned my dumbbell. He oh. knows exactly. Wow. He knows the insides of the dumbbells. So he said, I can make you one of those and it's, it's the same. But that's not what you're you. I mean, when you tore back lines and I guess not what you're you. No, I have my Bluto Tone. Oh, you do? Oh. I leave a rig in Tokyo. I leave a rig in Brussels for Europe. I leave a rig in London. And then I have my U.S. stuff. So most of the time. I can have my gear. Not always. Right, right, right. right. What, pedals? Anything happening? Yeah, I, I'm only using one pedal. We'll have to look on my pedal board. I forget the name of it. It's made by a Japanese gentleman oh. here. And it's just an extra kind of distortion pedal that I can kick in for a different tone. A little boost mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. solos or whatever. Okay. And I have a little reverb and a little chorus available to me for ballads. Things yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. What, what, um, Gauge strings you use? Yeah, I've been using 10 through 52 for a long time now. Right. Diodario. Uh, you know, I have, now that we're talking guitars, I have an issue with my 335 I've had for years, which you don't have, which is on every gig I've, every jazz gig I can use it on. Every non jazz gig I can't because I can't bend. As soon as I bend anything on the top three G, B, E string, that's it. What are you using? What gauge? Uh, tens. Tens? Tens, tens, yeah. yeah. No, I never use nines. Tens or elevens even. Tens most likely. And it's just, I've had it looked at and people are saying, oh, put some... You have the stop tail piece. Not yeah, the stop tail piece. Change the tuners. Um, you know, put some graphite or some some, sure. some kind of oil. Anyway, I, You've you tried know. all this stuff. Can't, yeah, but I love the instrument. What year is it? 79. Oh, that's your problem. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, you're here playing. Well, shoot, you're yeah, I don't. Yeah, I just figured I'd ask. Um, yeah, sure. You're here on tour with Steve Lukather, yes. who, uh, after talking with Steve, evidently looks very highly upon you and considers you his mentor and uh, all that stuff. Um, Normally, when you're not playing with Steve, obviously, this is a once-in-a-15-year thing. Um, you're normally doing your solo 
So. Yeah, I'll travel with my yeah. new band. Uh -huh. um, are you w working on new stuff now, new albums, anything in the future that's coming up? You know, I was here last year with David T. Walker. Yes. And so we recorded. Oh, okay. So after this tour, I will go home and mix that album oh, okay. for release maybe later this year. You mix it yourself? Well, I'll bring in my favorite engineer, and okay. together we'll make decisions. All right. You know how that is. Yeah. And you let them do all the technical, but you know, a little more. Something, something's missing or something. Exactly, okay. sure. And then um, Steve and I have recorded every night that we're here. Oh, nice. And tomorrow night, you know, we're shooting live DVD. I mean, yeah. DVD. Yeah. So later in the year, Steve and I will get together and mix that oh, for a release yeah. next year. That'll be great. So there's some products. So 15 coming. years ago, there was a CD yes. from Osaka, correct? That's right. Which, I, from what I heard, wasn't really... I mean, it just happened. We got so excited yeah. when we got here that we said, we need to record this. And Osaka was going to be two weeks later or okay. ten days later. So we scrambled and got the recording truck yeah. and the whole bit. Won a Grammy. Yeah. Right. yeah, cool? yeah. Okay. And here you are 15 years later yeah. revisiting it again yes. with a DVD. Yes. Coming at it from different perspectives because we all sure. grow as music. I mean, it, it's... Sure. it's, it's it's got to be different, it but, you know. But uh, yeah, that's 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 fantastic. Well, you've had a, a blessed career. I mean, you, sure. you know, and I won't say lucky because you had to be prepared and you had, you had the skills to bring it to you know to bring it when it was needed. Otherwise, you wouldn't have gotten the work you've gotten. But I have, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. But I have, from my perspective, I've taken advantage of uh, at least telling young guitar players when they talk to me that. Yeah. In my opinion, there was a luck part of my career, and I always played what I felt. The world agreed. There are some guys playing exactly what they feel, and the world didn't right. embrace it. Mm -hmm. To me, that's the luck part from my perspective. You can't plan that part. That you were able to be yourself. You don't have to change it, and people accepted And people accepted me. There can't be anything more as a musician that you would want than to be able to be yourself and have people accept it. Exactly. And you certainly carved out your own... Yeah, there's certain people... Because you, you started as a studio musician, and there's certain people that are studio musicians. Mm -hmm. I There's many guitar players I know that are fantastic guitarists. But when I hear them, I don't recognize who they are. They just sound like fantastic guitar. And that, that's great. Of course. But I think is. as a musician, most people, well, some people, search for that, their own voice, and the search goes on and on, and some people just have it, whether you're Wes or yourself or Steve Ray Vaughan, whoever it is, you just have your own thing, sure. and you hear one note, and you know, that's Larry Dyson. Exactly. Yeah, so. yeah, that's the blessing part. Any advice, I'll, I'll, we'll wrap it up, mm -hmm. um, any advice for young guitar, I know it's a much different music industry now, but sure. any advice for young guitarists that want to do what you, that want to be professional musicians, sure. professional guitarists? Sure. Um, um, well, I try to tell the guys, enjoy the process, because we can't really plan the outcome, but the process of holding that instrument, <laughs> learning that new chord, yeah. all of that is personal. Whether you become professional, make a nickel, or make a thousand dollars, sitting there doing this, that's, enjoy the, the process of doing that, because that's the thrilling part. Good advice from Larry Carlton. Enjoy the process. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Yeah, thanks, man. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, get it.